Joining us right now, the, the, the Chief Investment Officer of U.S. Bank Wealth Management, Eric Friedman. Eric, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Maria. Well, Great got, to see you. You've got dilemmas on your hand. Look at this market that will not quit. 26% higher uh, since the election. You've got 23,000 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Are you getting worried? Do you think that this is warranted? We're still bullish, Maria. We think that there is still an upside case to be made. We are certainly, you know, we've been in this camp of being more pro-growth for the last 12, 13 months. It's really helped our clients. But without question, as we uh, escalate higher, we do get some concerns about complacency. But in general, we're really positive and really optimistic about the future. I'll tell you, if, if, if anything, uh, you know, indicates what's going on in, in a place, it's the stock market, right? Because that's basically telling us what's happening in business and the economy. It feels like small business is hopeful that tax reform gets done by next year or at the end of this year. Senators voted 50 to 47 yesterday to begin discussions on a 2018 budget that would allow Republicans to avoid a Democratic filibuster when they pass their tax plan. The president and the Treasury secretary signaled yesterday that the White House tax agenda is moving forward. Listen to this. I want to get your reaction in terms of how much of this is due to this anticipation. Let's give our country the best Christmas present of all. Massive tax relief. This is our opportunity to unleash a new middle class miracle. This isn't just about tax reform. This is about jobs and creating economic growth. And that, that's what we're focused on. If we get tax reform done this year, it will be extraordinary. And that's our objective. So we know that the environment feels a little better, but how much of this gain in the markets is due to the anticipation about tax reform? We think it is a, a big part of the game, Maria, and I think leading up to this week, we assigned probably only a 20, 30 percent handicap from the market, really thinking about tax reform being done for this year. So if we're surprised to the upside, then we do think there's a lot of, there's probably another leg higher for equities here. So again, uh, as you mentioned earlier in your, your comments, that small businesses are really the backbone, backbone of this country. And so the fact that you are seeing really corporations still holding back a little bit of capital spending in anticipation of clarity on tax reform, should that happen, that could be really the next leg higher for, for equities here. So Eric, Lindsay Bell here, just wondering, how do you play the end of this year going into 2018? What sectors do you favor? Uh, is there value out there? You're bullish on the market. Who's going to lead it higher from here? So we're still bullish on technology. It's certainly something that you guys have covered very well this morning. So it's a sector that, that continues to innovate. It actually represents $50 out of the $130 consensus estimates for the S&P for this year. So it really is pulling a lot of the weight for the market. So that is still a space that we think really just needs to deliver with what we think are still favorable expectations. So only a 10% Earnings expectations growth for this year we think is actually very achievable for tech. We also think that parts of healthcare are interesting. Again, it's been at some some junctures this year the unloved sector because of again some concerns about uh, what will happen legislatively. But uh, again, we think there's still some good value in the healthcare space and also consumer discretionary some selected areas there. So that's been really our take domestically. We also think there are some opportunities internationally as well. We've been bullish. Uh, we have we remain bullish, but certainly watching the data closely in the year end. Hey, Eric, Bob Nardelli here. Um, you know, tell us uh, what are some of the what are the some of the signs that you would share with us that we should be concerned about? For example, we did get a head flake head fake on the uh, Affordable Care Act where the Senate agreed to talk about it and then voted it down. Maria talked about the Senate willing to talk about the budget. Obviously, if it doesn't pass, then we've got even a higher hurdle. If the budget doesn't pass, is that a, a way sign that says maybe we ought to be a little more conservative as individual investors? Bob, well, it's a good insight. Our take is that you know markets really have not overly reacted to, I'd say, negative legislative uh, standoffs, if you will. So really the best take that we think is if you see some back and forth that actually results in, in markets selling off, which again, we really haven't seen and to a great extent domestically, that would be our first take that perhaps the, you know, the market's a little concerned about some of the legislative gridlock. But until we actually see that reaction come through, and actually as we still see data, very, very positive trending, that tells us that, again, remaining that, that pro-growth upside camp is, is the right positioning for our clients. Eric, this is John Layfield here. Isn't this a bit like uh, Linus and the Great Pumpkin? I mean, these guys have promised this all year long. They've not delivered. Are you betting this percentage on tax reform or simply tax cuts, which you think they can probably get by with some type of repatriation of money? 
That's a great, uh, I like that analogy. We actually, uh, you know, to throw another one in the mix is really, I call it a policy shot clock, which is the market basically saying, you know, we've got these great company earnings coming through. We've got ongoing economic growth momentum. So we actually don't need to see a, um, you know, a, a tremendous amount of progress near term. But again, 12, 13 months from now, we'll be talking a lot about midterm elections. So as we draw closer to that time frame, I think that, that Linus analogy is, is really true. But again, I think that there certainly is some time. That shot clock, to go back to my analogy, has really not gone off yet. So again, I think there will probably be some, some continued back and forth. But as long as we have corporate earnings growth, as long as we have good, solid, synchronized economic data, which is really what we have globally right now, that there's probably a little bit of a pause in terms of investors being concerned about some of the legislative issues you talk about. I think rightly so. Uh, Eric, does the market care, will the market care and react to what we hear from the president on the next chairman of the Fed? Uh, president Trump is meeting with Janet Yellen on Thursday of this week. We may hear this week or next week who the president would like to see as the next chairman. What will, what will the markets uh, do, you think? We think it's a big catalyst, Maria. It's an important point to, uh, to point out for viewers. So there's really two camps, not to get into a long missive here, but there's really two camps of potential uh, Fed chairs. Those that I'd say are more asset price focused, so those that are a little more market friendly, uh, are highly, highly communicative and very focused on what the market's interpretation of their interest rate policy decisions might be. And there's a second camp which is a little less uh, concerned or a little less, uh, I'd say, market, uh, market focused. And so uh, I think depending on who we see, that will certainly be a, a market reaction. So uh, I, I do think there still is a disparity between what the market thinks for future rate increases and still what the, what the current Fed says. So, you know, if Yellen remains, uh, I do think that that would be uh, viewed as widely, widely bullish for, uh, for risk assets. Again, she has been more asset price focused and more asset price friendly. I uh, do think that there are other people that, that are maybe a little less, uh, a little less focused on, on, on S&P 500 reactions right. to their policy set. Who's so, good for the markets? Again, I do think it's, the, I'm sorry, say again? Who's good for the markets? Uh, I think that, you know, I actually, I think that all of the above, not to be, not to be, uh, uh, no, you know, you a, a standoff from the question. Yeah, I think that you know, really the, the more asset friendly, I think that I think that Yellen would be widely perceived to be a, mm -hmm. a continuation of ongoing policy. I think that she would really be a favorable Powell as well. Mm -hmm. I also I think that all four would be great candidates in terms of those that are considered finalists. Right. Had a chance to spend some time with with all. So right. again, this market is uh, is is we think we think going higher, and uh, and, and certainly look, we'll look for that news flow as well. Eric, thank you, Eric Friedman there.